All right, everybody, it's Ross the Fig Boss, and my 2022 fig season is about to begin. You may have noticed here with the greenhouse is that the tarp is no longer over top. We took this off. We're now letting the light come in. We're getting that greenhouse effect. Things are getting a lot warmer during the day. We also have this space heater here that's been going on at night and also somewhat during the day if it's not too warm outside or sunny outside. Um, and so we've been warming things up in here and that's what really is uh, kickstarting these fig trees out of dormancy and into the growing season. This is a really great way to artificially start your season at a much earlier date. In fact, today's only the 23rd of February. Typically we start this process in March, maybe March 1st, March 15th. Um, this year we're doing it a little bit early because I had anticipated the weather being a bit warmer. We've had a, a nice set of warm days at the end of February here. In fact, we had a record high in the Philadelphia area of uh, a, a really warm day that came in. I think it was like 71, which is a bit insane, but uh, I'll take it. Unfortunately, now that I've anticipated this warmer weather, the winter is, is coming back with a vengeance and we're getting a, a nice cold front that's coming in starting tomorrow. Today is uh, the 23rd of February for anyone interested. So tomorrow that cold front's gonna come in and it's not really what I want because I'd rather have it stay above 20 at night um, consistently if these trees are gonna be waking up, if they're gonna be leafing out. That's not something I want um, for my plants, even the seedlings in here to be subjected to is those colder temperatures. So um, it's a bit unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. You gotta deal with nature as it comes. In this video, I'd like to tell you guys about some things that I'm doing that you should do and pay attention to now that you're, you're potentially starting your fig season. Um, you're doing something similar to me with this artificial waking up process. Um, we even have something here for people that you guys out there maybe are not doing this. We need to show you guys some of the trees that we're not waking up just yet that will get the more natural wake up process because we have to take care of those right around now as well. Um, so just to start off with this whole heat thing, that's really the main thing, right? Getting the trees awake is really uh, the biggest thing that you have to worry about is the heat. Um, it's not the light, you know, the trees can be in total darkness and still wake up. Uh, you need to give them plenty of soil moisture actually at this point as well. We turned the water on at the house outside so that I could actually water these trees in the greenhouse. Got the hose over here, connected everything up, watered every single potted tree in here for an extended period of time. As much water as I could stand and give them. Saturate the soil because we need to rehydrate those roots. That's also critical for that wake up process. So it's really just about those two things. Rehydrating the roots and giving them enough temperatures. Now you don't want to get crazy with the heat. That's a thing that people fail, and I failed with last year with the tunnels. We're gonna talk about the tunnels as well. Forgot about that. You don't wanna blast the heat too soon on these trees, especially when there's no sap flow um, and they're dormant. You can go a bit crazy with the heat um, as soon as there's sap flow, as soon as you start to see that bud break. But typically what you want is temperatures around 55, 60, you know, on average. You know, you don't wanna go over about 85 or 90, you wanna keep it around 80 at the highest and you wanna keep it about 50 at the lowest. If you, can, if you do that for a number of days, probably like a week, the trees are gonna wake up and it's only a matter of time. So you gotta you know, be on top of those two things, is the heat and the water. The other thing I would just suggest, because this is the beginning now, they're gonna be awake very soon. You know, I've, I've had this heater on now for about five days you want to feed the trees as well. Uh, now that it's the beginning of the season, it doesn't matter if they're in the greenhouse, it doesn't matter if they have a natural wake up process that, and then they go on the patio. They're now in the active growing season and if we give them the right amount of nutrients and the right amount of water, from day one, day one of the season, we're gonna have the best results by the end of the season. So we need to make sure the food is critical. I don't really care what food you give it. I don't care if it's uh, organic, inorganic, what the nutrient you know, complex is, just give it something and be 
you know, time it so that it's now, you know, don't give it organic fertilizer now necessarily because that stuff takes time to break down. It's gotta be a fast acting organic fertilizer or a synthetic fertilizer that happens right away. You know, a soluble liquid fertilizer, um, even the, the slow release pellets I use all the time. That's what I've been using. And I actually apply those pellets in the fall because I don't wanna have to get in here dig around, move things around and be able to feed all the trees. I put everything in here with the, with the fertilizer and the mulch on top right away. And that's also something I think that would help your cause. You know, not just feeding them but, and watering the trees, but also mulching them at this point. You know, it's a good idea because it can get very hot in this greenhouse and these potted trees warm up real quick. You can kill your tree, I promise you. If it's too warm in here too soon, you're not watering your trees enough, you can definitely kill them or kill them all the way down to the base. Um, and it'll happen quicker than you might think. So even putting down some mulch, these are rice holes. I get them from AM Leo. I'm out of them actually. They raised their price triple since I've had purchased them years ago. Um, but I think they're, they're at least still worth it maybe. I'd probably just go with some other mulch material that's a lot cheaper now and not bother with these rice holes, but uh, it was a very cheap source of mulch that came in pretty high quantity. So that's the big tip. The other big tip here is to organize these branches. We wanna make sure that these branches are being placed in a way away from each other to maximize the amount of light that they can get. Yeah, there's a lot of branches in here. There's a lot of trees in here. You don't wanna do that. Very soon this table and this section here where I have for the seeds is gonna come out of here. This isn't gonna be in here forever. I'm just starting my broccoli, my cool loving crops, and I'll be able to make use of this area. It's a fourth of the greenhouse that I can't use right now. So I will be taking these trees off of their, their stack here and moving them to where this table is in order so that they can get enough light. We need to get every single branch here enough light, otherwise they won't set the fruit buds. So even if we give them a head start to the season with all, the, with all this heat, every variety is different and needs a different amount of heat. So if we don't give them the right amount of light, it doesn't matter how early we wake them up, they're not gonna put out fruits, guys. It's that simple. So that's the greenhouse. That's all the tips with the greenhouse. Uh, let me show you guys the tunnels the plans for the tunnels anyway. After this cold front, I'm gonna set up the tunnels. So again, it's the, it's the 23rd of February. I wanna make sure the temperatures are pretty rare that it's gonna get over 25 uh, for me to set up these tunnels. And I wanna make sure that when I set up the tunnels over top of these trees, as we talked about very recently, with uh, a lot of the branching here that we had intended to bend over and stake it down, a lot of this upper growth that didn't lignify well is now dead from the cold and uh, the freeze thaw cycles through desiccation. So what we're probably gonna do is chop a lot of these trees back again to six to 12 inches, like these trees over here that you see. We set up the low tunnels. It's the same situation as the, the greenhouse. We're just giving them the heat that they need in the soil it's all about the soil temperatures. It's not about the air temperatures hitting the branches. That doesn't matter. We gotta warm up the soil with those, those low tunnels and ease into that. We're not gonna go too crazy this year. We're gonna take my time with it, get them awake. Uh, and then at that point, we have all kinds of other things to talk about. But that's really my main concern. We don't have to water the soil. It's already very saturated here. It just, it rains constantly. And the soil is already um, filled with moisture. So. That's the big thing with the tunnels, that's coming up. Um, also got to set up the tunnels for um, my heat loving garden here and also some cool loving crops that we'll probably do as well if anyone's interested in that. The last thing that we have to do, and I'm gonna do this today because I gotta turn off the water before it gets cold again, is I am going to come in here underneath the house and you can see all these small one gallon size trees that I have. And even five gallon size trees you can see over there. Um, these need some water. Now I don't typically water the, um, the five gallon size mostly because they don't need it. 
Um, I water everything in really well before the, uh, the fall, before I put them away. And I also mulch them really well. So the combination of those two things, by the time the spring comes around, my last frost, which is about May 1st, typically they're out on the patio by April 15th. Assuming that comes around, or you know when that comes around, excuse me, I don't need to water them uh, until that time. So when you know they, they're out here on the patio, that's the first thing I do is water them in, just to help them wake up. But they're going to wake up on their own. Again, I don't need to water those other than the one gallon size pot. So I'm going to come over here with the hose, fill up a watering can, and that's my job for today. And that's it. I'm going to call it after that. But uh, yeah, guys, that's, that's the video here of what is happening now with the fig trees, the processes, things that you need to look out for, what you need to do. There's nothing more than that. And there's nothing less than that. If you do everything I said, you're going to have a good start to your season. Uh, what you don't want to do, by the way, is have your trees wake up in darkness. You want to have them wake up in full sun. So if you have a tree inside your house right now that's not getting enough light and it's awake, you need to find some sort of situation to salvage your season you can get it out in full sun. Maybe you could set up a makeshift greenhouse or set up a tunnel or something. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. So anyway, guys, that's the end. Thanks for watching. A lot of fig videos to come this year. Uh, I'm going to focus a lot of that on this channel, and we'll talk to you guys soon. All right, take care.